Hey there, this week I made a little swamp gas balloon. It's a tabletop piece that I had spotted at my local game store and I thought I gotta make it. It's such a cool looking little thing and it looks like an achievable piece, which it was, but it was a little frustrating at times, but I got there with it and I really like it. And uh, yeah, I hope you like it too and I hope you enjoy the video. I washed the baby wipes before I used them because I didn't want the glue interacting with the baby wipe juice. I don't know what it is, but that stuff that's in there, I didn't want to take a risk of it, you know, interacting and dissolving the glue. I cut them into random pieces and then I just separated them all and dropped them into a jar of straight up PVA glue. I didn't water it down because I want it to be super strong and leathery when it's dry. I only did this for the first layer though. Give it a good shake and then it's ready to start putting down just the first coating of these and you want to make sure you get a hundred percent coverage of the balloon. You just weigh it down so it won't roll around and then just completely cover it as evenly as you can. You want to make sure there are no gaps because later on it, I put expanding foam into this and any gaps it would literally start splitting so you've got to make sure you do it entirely and entirely well. After doing three coats on this, I let it dry for quite a long period of time and it still feels a bit squishy and soft so I had a balloon ready to stick it back in there and blow it back up in case the balloon did collapse once I had released the air out of it. And it didn't but it kind of went down in a few places. I just put it back into the jar to paint it and I kind of thought that painting it would make it a little more solid because when you do paper mache balloons it really makes them really hard but it didn't do that with this it still stay, stayed a sort of soft leathery texture and that's why I put the expanding foam inside it I gave it a very light dry brush just to try and bring out some of the texture of the the baby wipes you can't really see this later on but uh, it was well intended. <laughs> you go putting expanding foam into this, you make sure that you leave the end of the balloon open so it can extrude itself. Otherwise it will literally be a slow motion explosion. It will find any weak point and it will blow out in those points. So yeah, leave it open, give it a little sand. It's such light foam that expanding stuff's great. And then just patch it up with a bit of paint if you've made a mess like I did. I was just glad I had it at hand. I used a black pen. This is like a paint pen. The black markings that I'm doing are basically going to be the shadow of the stitching. And then I used a brown paint pen on top to draw in the stitch work. I drew these in very randomly as well. I used a visual guide the entire time. So pull one up for yourself and keep going back to it to do the um, the drawing and the rope work and everything. You're going to need it if you're going to try this one. I just coloured the brown in on top so you can see it's kind of that uh, shadow effect. You just tidy it up. It's, it's a pretty lengthy job. But uh, it's nice to just sort of sit down and then just keep it tidy and then playing around with it. It's a, it's a fun little job. And you just sort of draw in what essentially look like laces, just a line either side. And it looks like where the pieces of leather would have been stitched together for the balloon. You can really see it coming together once it's drawn in like that. It's got a nice effect. And then on top of that, I just used a cream colored pencil, very soft lead. 
and then just put highlights on top of the brown it's just to give a pinpoint of light to give it an arc sort of feel to it so it looks like a three-dimensional stitch I think a little bit of paint probably would have been better than this pencil but I was doing it quickly and then just a little paint pen on top to pinpoint even finer on top of that cream colored stitching you can see how it works it's pretty good I'm just gonna make the um, I don't even know what that bit of the balloons called the bit you put your mouth on on a regular balloon not you know a hot air balloon <laughs> But I'm just making that bit with some polymer clay because I knew it would be easier to make and easy to glue on. I just shaped it the way I wanted. I was very rough with it because I want it to be untidy looking. And then just sort of made some impressions that would look more like the, um, the leather work that I'd already done with the baby wipes. And just pressed in some stitch marks. Shaped it and I bunged it in the oven. It was easy enough to make. I, I do love polymer clay. It just, you can do so many little things with it. Things that otherwise would be really fiddly and time consuming. It's a quick fix for everything, this stuff. After I'd cooked it nice and hard, I just chucked it as I would do with everything into a brown wash. And then I let it dry before I glued it on. I created a little mold out of air drying clay for making the basket just to get the shape so I could bake it in the oven with the polymer clay. I wrapped it neatly as I possibly could with foil so the clay won't stick to it. Also with this make sure you make it a little smaller than you want the basket because it, it will get bigger once you put the polymer clay on it. I just rolled little long snakes of polymer clay and then I'd take two and just twist them and that created the uh, wicker? I don't know what a basket's made of. Basket stuff. I left a little hole in the center so I could put a stand up in it and then you just wind it round for the base I did this a little neater off camera as everything I do it is a rough guide I saw a video on this a couple of weeks ago and I was just like who comes up with this stuff oh, my brain would never have thought to do that <laughs> that's why I love YouTube oh it's amazing it's a, such a cool little thing I wish I could remember who did the video. Thank you, whoever you were. I'll just neaten it up before I bake it in the oven. I don't want to do the whole thing in one go because I don't want bits falling around as I'm working on it. So I just did it in segments like this. And the same with the sides, just wound it round. I did this on a baking dish before I did it. I'm doing this for the camera, but do this on a baking tray so you don't have to pick it up because if you pick it up it's going to fall apart i used a cream colored polymer clay to do the top and the bottom of the basket and i use these wooden rings just for a guide for polymer clay to make the bands that will support all the rope work there's three bands that i had to make i only showed two here but if you use a guide that you'll see a visual guide you know from an image you'll you'll know what it is anyway and then more heavier this macrame rope i think it's called and i just put it in the wash and split it all up and used that for basically everything as rope work i found with this it was very surprising that super glue gave you an instant bond with this sort of twine and polymer clay so there was no fiddling around but um geez your fingers are a mess after a job like this because it's just and i went through literally about six tubes of super glue making this but it was nice to have something with an instant bond it was for for fast work it was pretty good i just wound it round and round and round covered almost all of it
neatened it up a little bit. And they're ready to go, ready to start putting the uh, rope work on. I put a pin down the center. I made the most even cross section that I could and glued it down with a water-based glue. I want it to be super strong and I left some slack in this so I could tie off pieces and put them through. I needed to try and make it as evenly as I possibly could. So I did it side by side, just one side, then the other, then one side, then the other, to try and make sure that I stayed on track and didn't um, make them uneven as I tied them up. This was, uh, it was not a fun job. I didn't enjoy any of this. But it was a learning sort of experience and yeah, I've learned I'd never want to do it again. <laughs> but I'm still, I'm really happy with how it came out. And I just made sure I tried to keep a curve as I went. And that was the beauty of the super glue. I could instantly put pieces down and keep them at a curve. It looks great once it's done. I was really happy with the way it looked once I'd gotten it all together. I tidied this all up once I'd put this ring on. If you can find a way to hang this when you make it, I would suggest that I didn't and it, I struggled. So try and find a way to hang it. It'll help. It looks really good. I did make some errors and have to pull it away. So save your paint. Never throw it away until you finish the project. And then you can repair it as you go. I made this really strangely rough guide. I just wanted to make sure I could keep going back and, and get the rope as evenly as possibly done. Because it was just uh, a, a strange thing to work with. I did really basic loops so I could move them and take them off easily. And I didn't glue anything until... I was sure it was in the right position. Just to make sure I could slide them back and forth. Really important. And that's a little band that will sit on top of the basket. I made this later because I'd, I'd made mistakes. I glued the little ring down and I probably shouldn't have, so I made a second one. A lot of, uh, a lot of mistakes made during this one. I made sure that they were all exactly the same length. It was one of the things that I had to try and do to decrease the amount of mistakes that I would make. So I just used a popsicle stick or a coffee stirrer and um, measured each one once I'd tied it and cut it to the right length. I, uh, <laughs> I glued it down. I used this just to hold it before I glued it. And uh, I was sitting there watching the glue dry like you do. <laughs> and it dawned on me that the Pringles can would have been stuck inside it. So luckily I, uh, I fixed that before. I went to bed so yeah I pulled it back off and then put a, a toothpick and a pencil inside a toothpick holder and a pencil inside to hold it up so I could actually get it out because oh, I would have woken up the next morning with a Pringles can stuck inside it would have been awful I tidied all the ropes up I had to snip a few and then just re super glue them it was pretty easy I also put a tiny little bit of um, just a, a creamy coloured paint, just to highlight some of the points of the rope. I don't, don't know if it made much of a difference, but as a whole, I'm sure it would have. You can kind of see where I did and didn't put it, so I like to think you can see the difference. And that's the little uh, swamp gas balloon. I, I like how it came out. I really do. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.